Okay, I have to come clean with something. I'm a little bit of an Apple fanboy. Everything from headphones to cell phone to my laptop, it's all Apple. And here's the thing, it seems as if everything Apple touches does turn to gold. Everything that is until they decided to try their hands at a credit card. Hey folks, and welcome back to the channel. My name is John, and this is a channel I dedicate to bringing you all of life's personal finance cheat codes. Now, in this particular video, you're probably here wondering, should you or should you not get the Apple credit card? You're probably seeing it advertised all over the place. Your friends might have it, your friends might be asking you about it, and you're just thinking, well, should I get it? I mean, after all, you might have a phone from Apple, some headphones from Apple, a laptop from Apple, TV from Apple, a monitor from Apple. You might have it all, and you're just wondering, hey, is it time now to complete the collection with an Apple credit card. And in this video, you're getting the breakdown of the A to Z as to whether or not the Apple card is worth it. So why don't you go ahead and pop a squat, tap the thumb icon to help me spread the good word, and we'll dive right in. Of course, if you came here from TikTok or Instagram, I appreciate you for checking out this video. But you're probably thinking, John, I don't have eight minutes to sit through a new planet. So what is it? Should I get it or should I not? The TLDR, no. The majority of you should not get the Apple card. It is not worth it. Now, if you're wondering of some alternatives, stick around the video, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you that breakdown. All right, let's get to it. The Apple credit card. Launched in 2019 in partnership with Goldman Sachs, this card had so much hype. After all, it was Apple. Everything this company touches turns to gold, so why can't they touch a credit card and turn that into gold? Well, I'm gonna give you all the reasons why not only is it not gold, it's that other stuff that comes out the other end. The Apple card comes with no sign up bonus, which is a bit of a shock given how big of a brand they are that they couldn't offer any type of sign up bonus. Now, the Apple Card does sit, in my opinion, in the entry level of cards, mainly because there's no annual fee. And if we think about all the no annual fee cards out there, the majority of them give you some sort of bonus for opening the card. But as classic Apple as it is, they're thinking, you know what? We're Apple, we got the name brand, we don't have to give you a sign up bonus. And so there is no sign up bonus. Next, let's talk earnings. The Apple credit card earns 3% cash back when you spend money at the Apple store. On the surface, that seems pretty sweet. If you're buying iPhones, if you're buying MacBooks, if you have big purchases at an Apple store, why not get 3% cash back? Well, let's think about it for a second. You get in the Apple card, and in my opinion, the Apple card is targeted to a demographic that's under the age of probably 27 or 25. So you're probably looking to make one, maybe two large purchases at Apple in a two to three year time horizon. You're not really purchasing a lot from Apple. So you go to an Apple store, let's say you pick out a $1,000 item and you get your 3% cash back, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Well, 3% cash back on $1,000 is $30. Instead, however, if you used any of the cash back credit cards I recommend, for example, a Chase Freedom Flex or a Chase Freedom Unlimited, you would have gotten a $200 sign-up bonus for spending $500 in the first three months. $200 against a $1,000 purchase, that's 20% cash back. In addition, with the Freedom Unlimited, you'll get 1.5% on top of that. So a 21.5% cash back for making the same purchase with a Chase Freedom Unlimited versus the Apple Card. Hmm, which would we rather? The next category where the Apple Card earns the highest is 3% across certain retailers. I'm gonna pick out a couple that I think most people are gonna to try to use it at. For example, Walgreens, a really common and popular drugstore where you're gonna get 3% cash back with the Apple Card, but you're also gonna get 3% cash back using a Chase Freedom Flex or a Chase Freedom Unlimited. Next, we'll take a look at Exxon. That's pretty cool, right? It's a gas station and you'll get 3% cash back. Again, you can get even higher with the Chase Freedom Flex on a 5% category bonus once per quarter. You're probably thinking, well, that's only once per quarter and I go to the gas station way more than three months out of the year. You're right. And that's why you should consider the City Custom Cash where it will give you 5% cash back bonus on your highest spend category every single month. And the third retail I wanna consider is Nike. And this one, I'll give it to the Apple Card. 3% back at Nike is phenomenal, and there isn't a card that necessarily can hit that every single month, so that one goes to the Apple Card. However, if you are looking for discounts, consider checking out cashback sites like Top Cashback or Rakuten that could further stack on top of a credit card such as the Apple Card or any other credit card. Next, the Apple Card claims to give you 2% cash back if you use the card with Apple Pay. That's not bad, right? 
But again, in my mind, why would you keep such a beautiful card tucked away in your wallet? I mean, after all, when the Apple card launched, it was launched to so much hype. I mean, this thing was gonna be made out of titanium, it was metal, it was heavy, it was so great, but you're incentivized to keep it in your wallet and never take it out. So to get 2% cash back, you have to use Apple Pay. So if you don't use Apple Pay, you're out of luck. And lastly, when it comes to just using the Apple Card itself, this beautiful, gorgeous, titanium metal card, not only is it only 1% cash back, but the reports of this card just scratching so easily. I mean, that's so annoying. Such a beautiful card, it's metal, it's shiny, you wanna use it, use it a couple times and the thing just gets scratched up. And kind of knowing Apple fanboys, myself kind of am one, I don't wanna scratch up my card, so I don't wanna use it but then I'm forced to use Apple Pay. But if I don't wanna use Apple Pay, then what do I do? And I just feel like there's a lot of friction in pulling the value out of this particular card. As it comes to the benefits of the Apple Card, I really do like the fact that there is no foreign transaction fee. That's actually really, really good for a card that has no annual fee. And that's the breakdown of the Apple Card. Now, this again is a card I feel like so many people ask me about because it's marketed so well. After all, Apple makes great products, they should make a great credit card. Honestly though, they don't. This card takes so much to pull value out of. I think the Apple credit card is for a specific subset of the population that's just coming in here and just spending buckets of money at Apple. Or it's someone who loves tech and pays using Apple Pay for everything that they do. Outside of those categories of people, this isn't the card for you. Now, for the majority of folks out there, you're probably sitting here like, great, I thought I was gonna get a credit card. Now you've convinced me not to. What next? Well, you've come to the right place because instead of the Apple card, I would implore you to consider looking at any of the entry-level beginner cards. Now, I've got a video here talking about my favorite beginner cards, but I can update that a little bit and give you what I think is hot as of 2022. Any of the beginner cards I'm about to mention next are all linked in the bio below if you're interested. And of course, if you have questions, drop them in the comment section below. So as it comes to beginner credit cards, here are three things to consider that I evaluate for when I consider one that is good. One, some sort of cashback earning. Two, no annual fee. And three, giving you some sort of sign-up bonus. So the cards that I always, always, always tell folks to look at are ones that I've had myself personally. Top of the list for me is the Chase Freedom Flex or the Chase Freedom Unlimited. Chase is amazing when you get into the Chase ecosystem and you start stacking it with their mid-tier card, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, or their premium card, the Chase Sapphire Reserve. But for beginners, the Chase Freedom Flex or the Chase Freedom Unlimited, phenomenal. $200 sign-up bonus, 1.5% to 5% cash back, and of course, no annual fee. The other card I would look at is the Capital One Quicksilver. This is a card that I actually personally have had as well. And the Capital One Quicksilver comes with a $200 sign-up bonus, plus a 1.5% cash back across the board. Third card I would consider you to look at is the Discover It. The Discover It is a card that I first got started out with in college. Right now, it comes with 2% cash back bonus in the first year, and it comes with 5% rotating categories. Third one I'll throw out there is the Built MasterCard. This card, for those of you out there that pay rent, is such a no-brainer. It's the only credit card on the marketplace that lets you earn points for rent. Think about this, $2,000 of rent a month, $3,000 of rent a month, are you getting anything for it? Probably not, should you? Yes, the built MasterCard solves that. This card is still on a wait list only, so if you're interested though, go ahead and tap the link in the bio below and punch in code John's Finance Tips. The fifth card I would consider you to look at is the City Custom Cash. This is a really, really cool card where it actually takes a look at your highest spend category every single month and gives you 5% cash back. I mean, how cool is that? This is probably the most no-brainer of the cards if you're like, oh, well, I don't know if I spend a ton for groceries or spend a ton for gas or spend a ton eating out. Don't worry about it. It will automatically look at where you spent the most every single month and just give you 5% cash back on it. And again, there's no annual fee and a $200 sign-up bonus, all right? And that is a wrap. Now, folks, if you're interested to help support the channel and allow me to continue creating the videos that I do, please feel free to check out any of the cards in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. I'm happy to take a look. Again, my name is John. This has been an incredible video, and I will catch y'all next time. Peace.